I do not support corruption. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you very much for supporting our channel. In today's views, we will take a look at the Prime Minister in Portland speak on representation. Some of people, let's get into it. We will give our own views to it, you know, and our own opinions. So let's get into it, my people, and leave your comment in the comment section below. And if you are new here, welcome, like and share, subscribe to the channel. My people, let's get into it. In my platform presentations to the supporters and workers of the party, I have raised the issue about the quality of representation that our elected officials give. There are some who are scared of that and probably feel it should not be raised on the platform. But when we come here, it is good that we raise the energy level with all kinds of antics you know you saw me there dancing but it is also important that you live here with a sense of purpose and a reassurance of the issues that concern you because I don't take it for granted that because you come here in a celebratory mood that you don't have things that are of concern to you and as your leader my job is to address your concerns and when we did our survey we didn't do any poll we did a very detailed research as to what are some of the issues affecting you the people who support the political process and what came out clearly is the need for stronger and better representation okay sir you make that quite clear say you did a survey we understand that but what i'm gonna ask you know why didn't you do this survey before you give those incompetent representative 300 percent raise and 200 percent raise sir that simple means it's a breach of contract and overpaid for underwork. So we need to have a discussion about that. You need to discuss that with us and let us know what's going on there, sir, because that don't sound relevant after this exorbitant amount of increase and pay for no work. You promise us better, sir. So why are you complaining now about their failure to meet up to the standard? You should done this survey before you give them that 300 percent increase or 250 and 200 percent increase simple so before we face the electorate in a general election we are going to ensure that everyone who carries the party's banner in a constituency is meeting a high standard of representation for the people and that representation is not just about being able to go into your pocket and say, hey. That is a part of it because in this audience would be persons who would have asked for things and would not have received it. And that leads to a high level of frustration. But there are more people here who are not asking for things. They are not involved in the politics of gimme, gimme, or spoils. What they want to see are important things, such as improvement in the infrastructure of their community, road, water, employment, security, Dealing with Pradia Lasne, improving wages. And what they want to hear from their representatives are constructive responses. And sometimes the greatest problem is that there is no response. 
Okay, Mr. Wallness, now that you say that I have my complaint, I would like you to ask Xavier Mean, why haven't he represent the people of Ginsland or have any concern for the people of Ginsland? Because for the past eight years, we haven't seen Xavier Mean keep a community meeting in the community with the people or consult with the people what is their problem or their issue they are facing in the community, sir. Honestly, go and ask him. We have two storm pass. We don't see Xavier Mean and we are living in a farming community up there. So Xavier Mean, you need to address that, sir, because this is not all about GLP and PNP. This is all about people representation and he's not representing the people of Higginsland. Even if you can't give it, even if you can't deliver it, but at least you must have a plan. At least you must be able to articulate it. And at least you must be able to go amongst the people, hear their complaints and frustration, take their cussing sometimes, and deal with the issues that face them. But what I'm saying, you know, Mr. Wallace, Xavier, I mean, did none of that, you know. Even though what you are saying, you know, is practicing to lie to the people and can the people see me, but he don't come none at all. He have nothing to do with the people of Ginsland. All the time that man come around here is when election come in and it is campaign time. Yeah. That is what I can give account for. I don't see this man no other time. Because he, he ain't representing the people. He's only representing those who vote for labor right. At the end of the day, people are reasonable in the main. And if you deal with them reasonably, they will deal with you reasonably. And that is the government that I lead. And that is what I expect of everyone who is on this platform. To treat the people with the respect that they deserve, with the patience that they deserve, with the love and care that they deserve. Okay, Mr. Olness, ask Xavier Main how we treat the people of Ginsland because you have no love and no respect for the people up there. He treat those people up at Ginsland with disdain, hatred, and neglect. Ask him. Ask him if he, if he ever keep a community meeting up there and try to figure out the people's problem or the issues the people facing on a daily basis up there. He never do that, sir, for the past eight years. The Labour Party is about building a caring society. And I want to repeat that. The history of our country at its start was brutal to us. It didn't show us any care. And as we have gone through, from slavery to emancipation to pre-independence, decolonization to independence, it has been a long struggle for all of us. A brutal struggle to the point where some of us don't believe that government can make a difference in our lives. In a real way. And as the first post-independence leader of the country, I wrestle with that notion that resides in the back of your mind. That government can and will make a difference in your life. And that's what my struggle is to prove to you that the government, whichever government, but government can make a difference in your life. And the first step to that is to ensure that the people who you elect represent you. That they are your voice, that they are patient, that they are caring, and that they are loving. But the people elect you, Mr. Wholeness, but you are not none of those things. You are not caring, you are not loving for the people. You are only for the elites. This is what we can see clearly. And look at it yourself and see. We have understanding of that. You are not for the people, man. No love you have for the people. Only for your friends and the elites who you serve. Simple. So, so, so 
I'm so happy to see you all here. But I do know that behind all of that, there lies the concern. And it is important that it is addressed. Because if it is not addressed, you leave yourself open to be exploited by persons who will promise you a pie in the sky. Andrew, you know, you know I have no shame when you use that word out of your mouth making promises. Just check until now, after eight years, not even one of your hundred day promises have been fulfilled. Not even one, sir. So stop your talking. You have no shame to talk about promises because you are doing the same thing right now as you speak. Continue with your conversation. They will exploit small grievances and turn your mind away from good government. And that is what is happening. Positive news doesn't sell. None of you is going to take up your phone and share on TikTok that the government of Jamaica spent $11 billion on the main road coming into Portland. No, nope, nobody. You're not going to hear that. Don't make headline. That don't make headline. But Andrew, you saw I go on right here, so nothing where you just speak here, so have nothing to do with positive news. What you need to understand is to understand that from things going well, the people don't have to complain. The moment things going wrong and affecting the people well-being and the people safety and the people development that is what the people have to complain about sir so stop being narrow-minded and stop being childish you see it trying to shun away from responsibility and people holding you accountable for your wrongdoing sir or for the things you are doing wrong simple that has transformed portland you don't hear about what we have started with the Bonebrook Urban Center, which is again going to transform Portland. Right now, we have several projects planned for housing in your parish. You don't hear about that. You don't hear about the new bypass that we plan to build, which we have already started to acquire land. That is going to be over 50 million US dollars. It's a bypass, but it is also a development road. It is going to open up a whole heap of lands that we can build low income, achievable and affordable housing for the people of Portland. These are things I have said and announced in budget presentations and said them over and over again. But if you look at what makes its way virally to your phones and to your ears and to your eyes is some foolishness. 90% of which is not true. And even intelligent people gobble it up and then call me and ask me if it's true. And then I say, you're so fool fool. You know, go to school, you're not supposed to know that it's not true. Okay, Mr. Holiness, you said all of that again. So I'm going to ask you if 90% of it is not true. So what are the 10% truth, sir? We'd like to know the truth. It tells me we have a problem with ignorance in the society. People not paying attention to the good things that are happening. Numerous good things. Okay, Mr. Holiness, you realize you are one of the biggest problems the country has as the leader, though, with your ignorance and arrogance. Yeah, 
because whenever time you go on the platform or on a platform to speak, you never speak of the good things that the PNP administration have done for this country. You only speak of their destruction that you said they, they did. For instance, you, you always speak of FinSAC. You and your administration. So it is right for the people to speak of your wrongdoing and your administration in this time. For instance, one of your wrongdoing is you taking charity money for your personal gain. That is a crime and a hole in itself, sir. So we have to speak about these things. All the government at the day accountable. Okay, my people, give thanks enough for your support. That is all for now, you know. So I'll catch you in the next one. So share your comment in the comment section below. If you are new, welcome here. Like and share. Subscribe to the channel to help the channel grow. I'm out for now, my people. United we win. Out of love. Like.